I was uh, I was on a webinar the other day, and someone asked me a question that I'd never been asked before. And uh, to be honest with you, it, it, kind of, it kind of threw me for a loop, which is unusual. I've, I've done you know, hundreds of podcasts and webinars and interviews over the last three or four years. And I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good at thinking I'm a feat and I'm, I'm full of shit. So I can, I can talk with the, with the, with the best of them about whatever I need to, to talk about. I can, I can run my mouth at, at a pretty good pace for a, for a continued period of time. And, uh, so, but this, this question they asked me, uh, it, ca it kind of, uh, it, it, I, I answered it. I, I went on and on, but, uh, I didn't really answer the question. We were talking about my book better, Self-Help for the Rest of Us, which came out about um, about three or four years ago. And uh, they asked me, "What is, is there anything that you wrote in the book better three or four years ago? Is there anything that you wrote in the book that you don't believe anymore, that you've changed your mind about? And uh, I'd, never, I'd never really thought, thought about that, actually, which is, which is an absolutely valid question. And now that I think about it, I'm amazed that no one's asked me that before because we're all, we're all moving rivers. Everything changes. We change our mind a hundred times a day. So surely uh, your opinions have changed. But I couldn't think of anything off the top of my head. So I didn't really answer the question. I went on and talked about uh, maybe I don't follow my own advice from the book as much as, much as I should. And maybe, uh, maybe I had expectations for the book and what my expectations for the book were and what, what the expectations expectations what the actual result of writing the book ended up being. I talked about that, but I talked for a good, you know, five, ten minutes about those subjects. What I didn't do was answer the question. What did I write in the book that I've changed my mind about? And so I've been thinking about that since since the webinar. What what's in there? And I actually went back and I went back and skimmed the book to, to take a look and say, well, what what did I write? And um, you know, and I, and I haven't changed my mind about a lot about it. It's, I, I think there's a lot of valid advice and a lot of valid opinions in the book, and it's been very helpful to a to a lot of people. So I, I I'm pretty proud of the book and uh, wouldn't change a lot about it. But I did find one thing. I did find one thing. There's a chapter in the book called "Get Your Head Out of Your Head." And it's about, uh, it's about meditation. It's about learning to train your brain. We all, we're all willing to go to the gym to, uh, to, to pump up our arms and build our biceps, uh, but very seldom do we make the effort to actually train our brain. And in the in the book in the in the chapter uh, get your head out of your head I, I tell the story it was about a Bob Newhart skip uh, skit that was on the old Bob Newhart show back in the 70s he was a psychiatrist and a uh, a patient walks in the room and starts uh, starts telling him uh, about uh, about everything that's going wrong in her life and how how her, her life is just going off the rails and uh, blah 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 this and and Bob just goes stop it and she goes no you don't understand I got this thing and that thing and the other thing and Bob just says stop it. And she keeps on, no, no, really, this is a big problem, but what if I did this? And Bob just says, stop it. <laughs> and the first time I saw the clip, a buddy of mine, Mark Tuart, who's a sales trainer, uh, uses it in his presentations to help salespeople overcome their own internal self-talk about making their excuses that they're going to make for sales and, and everything that they're going to do. And I, I, I used it in the book to illustrate that we all have these thoughts going around in our head, and uh, you can control these thoughts. And, and meditating strengthens your ability teaches you the ability to help control your thoughts. When these, when these negative thoughts and emotions and, and worries and plans and everything pops into your head, you can control them. You can stop it. But I've changed my mind. That's the one thing I think I've changed my mind about and not necessarily changed my mind. It's kind of a nuanced opinion because what I've learned in the last three or four years since I've written the book and I've gotten, I've meditated a lot more and I've strengthened my brain, I've trained my brain what I've learned is that meditation and mindfulness isn't about controlling your thoughts. It isn't about stopping the negative thoughts that pop into your head or the positive thoughts or the, the, everything that's bubbling around. It's not about controlling your thoughts. It's about learning to not let your thoughts control you. Meditation is intimate familiarity with it. it meditation increases your mindfulness which is intimate familiarity with the present moment. It allows you, instead of worrying about whatever you're worrying about, or getting lost in your mind following these worries and chasing them down a rabbit hole, or remembering the conversation, the fight that you had with your boss last night, and just chasing that down the rabbit hole and what you would have said and what you could have said and what you should have said and all these things that go on in our thought. It, it, instead of chasing those down the rabbit hole, meditation strengthens your brain and allows you to come back to this moment, right here, right now, the only moment that there is. It allows you to be present and be with 
the person that's right here in front of you, right here, right now, in this present moment. And if you can spend more time right here, right now, in this present moment, making a genuine human connection with this person right here, directly in front of you, you're going to get more accomplished right here, right now, than you'll ever get accomplished chasing rabbits around your brain. So that's why I meditate, I meditate every day. About 10 minutes, sitting on my deck, breathing in and breathing out, so that my thoughts don't control me and I spend more time right here, right now, with you. I'll see you next time.